Okay, hopefully my tool is working now. But anyway, so we were saying when x is equal to minus 0.001, so we're getting closer and closer to 0 from the negative side, f of x is equal to minus 1,000, right? You can just evaluate yourself, right? And as you see, as x approaches 0 from the negative direction, we get cl larger and larger, or I guess you could say smaller and smaller negative numbers, right? You get, you know, if it's minus 0.001, you'd get minus 10,000, and then minus 100,000, then minus a million. You can imagine the closer and closer you get to 0. Similarly, when you go from the other direction, when you say what is uh, when x is 0.01, there you get positive 100, right? When you when x is point, oh, my thing is frozen again. When it's 0.001, you get positive 1,000. So as you see, as you approach zero from the negative direction, you get more, larger and larger negative values, right? I guess you know, smaller and smaller negative values. And as you go from the positive direction, um, you get uh, larger and larger values. And let me graph this just to give you a sense of what this graph looks like, because this is actually a good graph to know what it looks like just generally. Let me, so let's say I, that's the x axis, this is the y axis. Change my color. So when x is a negative number, Right, as x gets really, really, really negative, right? As x is like negative infinity, this is approaching zero, but it's still going to be a slightly negative number. And then, as we see from what we drew, as we approach x is equal to zero, we asymptote and we approach negative infinity, right? And similarly, from positive numbers, if we go out to the right really far, it approaches zero, but it's still going to be positive. And as we get closer and closer to zero. It spikes up and it goes to positive infinity, and it never—you never quite get x is equal to zero. So in this situation, you actually have as x approaches. So let me let me give you a, a different notation, which you'll probably see eventually, and I might actually do a separate presentation on this. The limit. The limit, as x approaches zero from the positive direction. That's this notation here, of one over x. Right, so this is as x approaches zero from the positive direction, from from the right hand side. Well, this is equal to, this is equal to infinity. Infinity, and then the limit as x, oh, this pen, this pen, the limit as x approaches zero from the negative side of one over x. This notation just says the limit as I approach from the negative side. So as I approach x equals 0 from this direction, right? From this direction, what happens? Well, that is equal to minus infinity. So since I'm approaching a different value when I approach from one side or the other, this limit is actually undefined. I mean, we could we could say that from the positive side it's positive infinity or from the negative side it's negative infinity, but they have to equal the same thing for this limit to be defined. So this is equal to undefined. So let's do another problem. And I think, uh, well, this should be interesting now. So let's say, just keeping that last problem we had in mind, what's the limit? What's the limit as x approaches 0 of? 1 over x squared. So in this situation, I'll draw the graph. And that's my x-axis. This is my y-axis. So here, no matter what value we put into x, we get a positive value, right? Because you're going to square it. If you put, um, if you put minus, so I mean, you could actually I, let me do it. It'll, it'll be instructive, I think. So let's say. Once again, obviously you can't just put x equal to zero. You'll get one over zero, which is undefined. But let's say you know one over x squared. What does one over x squared evaluate to? So when x is point uh, one, point one squared is point oh one. So one over x is a hundred. Similarly, if I do minus point one, minus point one squared is positive point oh one. So then one over that is still a hundred. Right, so regardless of whether you put a negative or a positive number here, 
um, we get a, a, a positive value. And similarly, if I put, if we say x is 0.01, if you evaluate it, you'll get 10,000. And if we put minus 0.01, you'll get positive 10,000 as well, right? Because we square it. So this graph, if you were to draw it, if you have a graphing calculator, you should experiment. It looks something like this. You can see this dark blue. So from the negative side, it approaches infinity, right? You can see that as we get to smaller and smaller, as we get closer and closer to zero from the negative side, it approaches infinity. And as we go from the positive side, these are actually symmetric, although I didn't draw it that symmetric, it also approaches infinity. So this is a, a case in which the limit, uh, that's not too bright, I don't know if you can see it, the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side of 1 over x squared is equal to infinity. And the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side of 1 over x squared is also equal to infinity. So when you go from the left-hand side, it equals infinity. right? It goes, goes to infinity as you approach 0. And as you go from the right-hand side, it also goes to infinity. And so the limit in general is equal to infinity. And this is why I, I, I got excited when, um, when, when I first started learning limits, because for the first time, infinity is a legitimate answer to your problem, which I don't know, and on some metaphysical level got me kind of excited. But anyway, um, I will uh, do more problems in the next presentation, because you, you can never do enough limit problems. And in a couple of presentations, I'll actually give you the formal kind of uh, rigorous mathematical definition of the limit.